this is Brandon from the Center for Excellence in Teaching. Today we're going to look at uh, providing feedback on quizzes, specifically at submission views, uh, as well as how students can see feedback on a particular uh, quiz if you provide it to them. So uh, I have a, a short quiz here. It's only got one question. Uh, I've got two attempts. One of them didn't have a question in it, but uh, the second one does. So we're going to take a look at that. But first what we want to do is we actually want to set up a submission view. So I've clicked on the quiz name. You see submission views tab over here. If I click over to that, uh, their default view shows them nothing. It's available immediately after they submit the quiz. Um, it's completely up to you how you set these up, but we want to set up an additional view. I'm never going to add uh, anything for uh, that default view just because I want that default view to be nothing right at the start uh, and then have students come back in and look at uh, the submission view so um, here we'll say feedback and results we'll call this this uh, view that if we want to add a message to this we can um, we can set restrictions for submission view so um, say our uh, our quiz didn't end until Friday at 10 o'clock. We could set it up so that um, students weren't able to see this submission view until Friday at 10 o'clock. Uh, don't use IP restriction. Um, there's not really a way that we can restrict IPs to folks. Um, that's that's really tough to do unless we, uh, we're using uh, a single lab with uh, an IP range. Uh, limited duration. Be careful with limited duration because say if we set uh, this for again like I said uh, Friday at 10 o'clock um, and then we limit the duration to 45 minutes well that's uh, 45 minutes after the quiz is submitted uh, and so that means we have set up the date restriction so that uh, the limited duration is is only right after that quiz is submitted and this date makes it so that students won't be able to see for that limited duration so um, I would generally pick one pick your date or pick that you're going to do a limited duration for that. Um, we can choose what we want to show here. Um, so a lot of the time what we'll say is, uh, yes, we want to show questions. Um, you can do show all questions with user responses. Uh, you can choose whether or not to show answers for uh, multiple choice and things like that. Um, you know, it's not, it, it's, that's going to matter a lot more than for something like a written response, uh, which was formerly called uh, long answer. So for long answer questions it won't really matter if you're going to show question answers because there are no question answers for uh, long answer or written response questions. So um, we'll go ahead and leave that out for now but if you do want to show the correct answers to the questions in addition to the student responses note that you do need to check this box. Okay so we're gonna let them see attempt score and overall score and then if you want to show any stats you can do that. So we'll go ahead and save this here now we have a submission view on our quiz. I'm going to go back uh, by clicking save and close to just the quiz list and then we're going to grade uh, the student's second attempt which will actually have uh, the question in there. So uh, if I go ahead and scroll down I can see there's two attempts. I did one this morning. Uh, these are auto graded because there's uh, there was nothing in it for this first attempt and there's only a written response question in here for the second attempt. So um, I'm going to click on that attempt if I want to see uh, what happened during uh, the quiz, I can click the event log and we can see uh, when a student went in, quiz entries, things saved, all of that kind of information. So if I scroll down, um, I can give uh, feedback on the overall attempt. If I do want this uh, grade to go to the gradebook after I'm done, I do have to check this graded box here. Um, I, like I said, I can provide uh, feedback for the entire attempt. Uh, you know, I can say, great job, something like that. Um, and then if I go down, um, I can actually look at, uh, here's the question right here. Uh, here's the answer that the student provided, the time that they provided it. I can enter a grade. Um, and then I have the ability to expand a feedback area where I can provide feedback. So I'm just going to say this is the question feedback area. Uh, you'll notice that a, a lot of my things here just say, um, here's what a written response question looks like. Um, that's a habit I've gotten into from testing over time. Um, it makes it so that uh, when we go in and we view this from the student side, um, like I can go back up here and say, this is the overall attempt feedback. 
so that we can tell the difference between these once we get to the other uh, the other side. So um, I've graded it. I've provided feedback. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. Now I'm going to go in as the student. Uh, we'll take a look from the student side to see uh, how they get at that feedback. And we're back in as the student here, so um, there's a couple things that I can do. If I click on this, it's going to give me a quiz summary. I don't really want that. I want to look at my submissions, so I have to click the drop down next to the quiz name and click on submissions. I'll see my two different submissions, and there's a couple things that you can see here. Uh, you can see that it tells the student that I have feedback for this. If I click on the attempt, uh, there's going to be that submission view that I set up, uh, so we can see here. Uh, here's my uh, quiz submission information. Here's the question. Uh, here is the response that I provided. And if I click the view feedback, here's the question feedback area right down here. You can see up top under attempt feedback is the overall feedback area. Um, and students uh, will be able to see it through the submission view that you set up.